Hello, everybody. My name is Benny, and welcome to The Fool's Apprentice. Oh, my gosh. So I didn't post a video this weekend, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I really am. It was my birthday week. I had a wonderful birthday. I My birthday was on Thursday, Friday the 13th. I have an interesting story. I'm going to tell it before we get into uh, my deck walkthrough. So... Uh, I got to work, and to my surprise, this has never happened to me before. My office was decorated. My doorway was decorated. There was a happy birthday sign that was flashing, which was really, really sweet. Uh, I really appreciated them doing that. I don't know, since that never happened to me, I never thought that would, like, touch me in any way. And it kind of warmed me up from the inside out. I thought it was very, very sweet. Uh, my birthday is on June, Friday the 13th, and a very interesting story with that is the movie <clears throat> Friday the 13th with Jason Voorhees um, came out on June, Friday the 13th. Okay, name of the movie, right? I happen to turn 13 years old that day. So that kind of freaked me out, and I'm walking into the movie because it wasn't uh, the day that it came out. So it's my birthday. I'm getting to see a scary movie because that's what I wanted for my birthday. I begged my mom and she said, fine, because I annoyed her. <laughs> and so I'm freaking out, right? And so I'm there with my brother with my popcorn and I'm sitting there and I'm really stressing out because, oh my God, uh, Friday the 13th, I'm 13th. Oh my God, am I Jason? Do I have the spirit of Jason in me? Which is silly, but at 13, that's what was going through my head. I was a nerd. And then the movie starts, right? And when the movie pans in into the gas station, at the bottom, it says 1969, the year of my birth. I was totally freaked out. Needless to say, the first time a jump scare came up, popcorn went everywhere. <laughs> I had a wonderful time. I thought it was the best movie ever. I go back and look at it now and I'm like, why in the world was that scary to me? But it sure was at the time. But interesting story, right? But <clears throat> I wanted an ice cream machine for my birthday because I'm having to watch what I eat. And part of what I would need to watch to eat is my sugar intake. So I'm giving up a lot of stuff. Candies, sodas, cakes, cookies on a regular basis. I'll have them every now and then, but not really. And I said, well, I don't want to give up ice cream. So I want an ice cream machine. And so I told my family, and several of them have um, given me some funds towards an ice cream machine. And that got me a, like a super duper nice ice cream machine. Like, it's amazing. I'm super excited. So I'm going to be having ice cream a lot more often than I normally do. But I think it'd be worth it because I get to make it at home whenever I want. And I get to make my own flavors. All right. <laughs> Enough about me. So, <clears throat> I've gotten a lot of decks in, and when I say a lot of decks, I've been really good about not buying decks, but all of a sudden, I went through a little phase, like in a day and a half, where I bought five decks. The one I'm showing today is not one of those, but I'm like, that's a lot of decks for me, because I'm really trying to be careful with my finances now that I have to, compared to before. But this deck is a deck that I've been wanting. It is the Major Arcana by Lerona Carrington. I first saw this deck on someone's channel when it was out of print. And this is the reason why I like watching decks out of print as well. This is another reason. Is that it came back into print. And I snatched it up. This deck was going up for a pretty penny. And right now, I think it's still on sale right now. Oh, do I have my phone with me? I do. Let me see if it's still on sale. With me. But I saw this deck and I had to have it. I just could not not have it. So I don't know. Um, I saw the images and I really fell for it. And I was looking for it, but it is so expensive. And I, but I know that if I could have gotten a decent deal, I probably would have gotten it, but it wasn't happening. All right. It's still in stock with Fugler Press. I'm going to put the link below. And I it's 25 pounds. 
So I don't know what 35 pounds, uh, $35. I don't know. Let me see. Oh, I'm going to do all the things. Pounds, $2. Can I even spell that right? All right. Let me see. 25. It's $31 and 70 cents. So I think that's a really good deal. It's majors only. Uh, I don't know why I went through all that. I'm not going to edit it out. Maybe I should edit it out, but I'm not going to because this is real life. <laughs> All right, well, let me flip the camera over. Let me show you why I love this deck so much. And I'm going to show you this book, which is amazing. All right, let me flip the camera over. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, everybody. Oh, this is it. I love this packaging. It is so cute. I love the color. I like the print. Nice and easy to read. It doesn't have any pictures of the Major Arcana that, that's in it, but that's okay because we have one right up front. Uh, so it is just a slide box cover. And this is a good sturdy box. You know, nothing special. Um, and here is the little guidebook, which I really like. And then the deck. <clears throat> it's a major arcana deck only. But I want to go over the little book for a second. So. The little book has some good information. In it. Uh, it's not a lot. But when you open it up, it has a lot more than you expect. It has a little bit of his. Isn't she beautiful? Look how beautiful she is. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, she was born in 1917, April 6th. Um, has really good information about her history, who she is, uh, what influences were in her life. She, uh, One of the things, she had a very interesting life. You know, uh, <laughs> she was expelled from two boarding schools that she was sent to because of her... Th the way she viewed things and her artwork and the tarot, which I thought was amazing. She had to flee Spain um, <clears throat> during World War II, which, again, is like a huge adventure in the worst possible way. Unfortunately, because she had a flea, she ended up having a nervous breakdown while she was in the United States. She had to be hospitalized in a psychiatric hospital. I mean, on and on and on. She has a very, very interesting life. And all packed in this little book. Uh, it makes you want to go read more. Let me rephrase that. It makes me want to go read more, which I will probably do. But here, um, just gives you a tiny little bit of insight how she sees the tarot. So on page 12 of this little book, second paragraph, it says, Carrington did not use tarot for fortune telling, but rather as a means to better understand her psychological and spiritual development. In Jodowski's book, The Way of the Tarot, The Spiritual Teacher in the Cards, he recounts her explanation. As each arcana is a mirror and not a truth in itself, become what you see in it. The tarot is a chameleon. I love that. Carrington's major arcana provides us with a key to unlock progressive erotistic lessons, taking us on a journey of self-discovery that encourages us to rethink our relationship to nature, gender, and spirituality. I love Love that. And I find that. So I also believe <clears throat> that the tarot really can help with the unconscious and spirituality. I think it helps me kind of delve deeper. It's like the veil behind uh, the high priestess. It's all. It's like it's coming forward. Uh, that's what the tarot does for me. But let's go over the I just took my glasses off and I'm going to put them back on. Let's look over the cards. I will tell you that this is one of my favorite tarot full cards of all time. I love the color choices. I love the simplicity. It feels very it's very Marseille. I love all the, I mean there is this beautiful line work that she has in it and I love that the color saturation of the blue in the background isn't one solid color. Um, I think that's really, really beautiful. Um, now, the, a lot of these cards, these are actually the paintings that she did. 
that were made into this. She actually painted the Major Arcana, which is amazing to me. These cards, or should I say paintings, were found after her death and were published in 2020 as a tarot collection. They ended up finding these in 2017, but only two of them were actually dated, which was in 1955. And if I'm correct, the magician was one of them. But he has all his tools that he needs. I love the simplicity of this deck, the black and the white, the gradation into uh, the gray, I think is beautiful. Yep, right here has the date. Her name was 1955. And then she has a numbered right in the corner. And I love that these images are not in a rectangle shape, but in a square shape. The high priestess with the two pillars, the scroll, uh, the red. I think the red is very, very striking. And to use it here, I don't really use color yet uh, in the tarot to help with interpretation. I just had somebody who came on for my tarot one top sh oh, one card tarot reading. Uh, steady and they use the chakras because of the colors which I thought was am amazing look at the empress the shield nature wheat it's just beautiful very simple very gorgeous the emperor this emperor <laughs> the red here feels much more powerful to me much more masculine than this red here in the high priestess this, this feels more subtle compared to this one. Uh, and then the gold coloring uh, feels very royal-like, which I really like. And he has all the things that I, I like to see in the Emperor. <clears throat> the Hierophant. Isn't that an interesting Hierophant with the yellow? Uh, I get the idea of the yellow being like the yellow light that breaks through the... The clouds when God is coming down and speaking to somebody like we see in, in, in shows and movies. But very much the Hierophant. The Lovers. Oh, isn't that an interesting depiction with the angel with the bow and arrow? You know, the contrast of red and purple, black and white, the stark differences of what you need to choose between, which is really nice. The chariot is really interesting to me. Um, it feels a lot more mysterious. This kind of mystery feel comes more hierophant than anything. But instead of them looking away, they're looking towards each other. And then she, he has, the chariot has these two figures facing away. Which I think is quite interesting as well. Justice. Look at that. The scales, the sword. Interesting that the, the justice doesn't have a mouth. I love that cobalt blue, I guess. <clears throat> now, I find this to be a very moving hermit. Because the silhouette and the image. So the silhouette is there. It's not even complete. Like if you look here, it's not even complete. But what I like about it is this sense of solitude that it has. The sense of of having to be alone, but having enough light to be able to see where you're going uh, to give you the idea that you really have to focus within to find your internal light. Finding your way out into the world is, is wonderful. I love this shade of like steel gray that comes in on this. Oh, and I love the text. We're going to be talking about the cards a little bit more in depth. But this has a lot of emotion for me. Now, the Wheel of Fortune. Um, not my favorite card. Not my favorite coloring. Uh, you generally, I generally get the idea. If I didn't have the title, I would know that this is the Wheel of Fortune. Strength. This is an interesting strength. <clears throat> and it's just not... A person and the lion it's a person the lion and i guess this is like a dragon of some sort doesn't really feel like a snake to me the hanged man very simple don't necessarily like the use of color 
Now we'll tell you that I didn't get this deck because I liked all the cards. I got this deck because I was emotionally moved by several cards. Death. Wow, that is an interesting looking death. Now I like that it's just not black and white. There's a little bit of kind of purplish or like dry bloodish kind of a color, which is interesting. I will tell you, I love this card. I love the use of color. The pink in here is just so beautifully used. And if you notice, the vessels are two very different colors, which I really like as well. Beautiful. The devil feels very much like devil. Again, another shade of red. So there seems to be a theme with the red in the backgrounds. This is very creepy. The eyes really, really stand out in this deck. The tower again with red. Very, and there's not lightning, but there's a sun out here. Maybe because it's too hot and it just bursts into flames because of the heat. The star is one of my favorite cards. I just find this so stimulating. I love the use of the stars, the use of the color. I love how this woman is posed. I just love this card and I have an idea of what I want to do with this card. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. The moon definitely feels like a moon card and not being able to see things clearly. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. The sun. You know how I feel. Uh, some of you may know how I feel about the sun. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the sunflowers. Generally, the kids are really creepy to me. This is the opposite of that. I love the use of flowers in here. Even the sunflower back here isn't so prominent that it bothers me or distracts me from the image. Uh, I love that the child is very gender neutral. I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful card. Judgment. Oh my gosh. Like, <clears throat> when I saw this, I felt like this is what must, it must look like to have to face ju Judgment Day. Like the colors and the darkness and you know, being there being one bright light in an area. This just, it just felt like if I had a real experience as a spirit going to be facing judgment, this is what it, it like feels for me. Very interesting. And my least favorite card, the world. I just feel that it's too busy for me. I don't like, I guess this is a teal green. I don't like it in contrast. I just think it's busy. I don't like it, but I know people love this image. And that's a great thing about art is that, you know, you can either love it, dislike it, be neutral about it. But as a collection, this deck just is really, really nice. Look how beautiful that spread, right? And if you just generally look at the color palette, the color palette is very diverse here, but there are themes. So she uses... She uses quite a bit of gold. I'm trying to kind of... She uses quite a bit of gold. Lots of different shades of red. Shades of blue that you'll see. Uh, not some gold. Not a lot of yellow, but some yellow. Pink, she only uses it, I think, in one card only, which is the Temperance card. So the cards that really, really stood out for me that made me want to get this deck is the Fool... The Magician, The Hermit, Temperance, I'm trying to get them all on here, The Star, The Moon, and Judgment. These cards really I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Oops, wrong way. These cards really have a way of speaking to me emotionally. And that's the thing. When it comes to tarot, I have to be moved. Either I have to be moved emotionally, intellectually, visually. There has to be something 
in the images that really draws me, moves me, makes me feel something. <clears throat> and when I, and I'll tell you the two cards that really did that for me were the fool and the star. I don't know what it is about these two cards that really hit me, but I'll tell you every time I see these cards, they really, really make me just sit, pause and look at them. So I told you I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I'm actually thinking of taking these images, blowing them up and putting them in my tarot uh, room in my new home as art pieces, because essentially that's what Lorena, Lorena did. She made this artwork of the tarot. Um, and I would love to just see them that way. So then what I decided to do is because, and I already knew I was going to do this, is I almost ended up buying the book. And the book is fantastic. Oh, let me talk about the cards. So let me see. Uh, is that standard says I don't think so. The cards are square. They're gl glossy, semi-glossy. They're not so bad. They really don't create a lot of reflection. You can see some there, but it's because I got the lights on. They lay flat. I look at them. I don't see the gloss, which makes the images really pop. Generally, I don't like all this white space that is around, but here it just works. It's like a frame to the images that you see. It's And then I like the font size. It's big enough to easily read without my reading glasses, but small enough not to take away from the image itself. It's far enough away from the image where it kind of just disappears for me. So I really, really like that. The backs were solid gray, which I find interesting. Um, they don't speak to me one way or another, but I think as if I were an artist to myself and I wanted really the focal point to be the images, it would make sense to have a solid back and a solid back that doesn't really give you a mood to fall into. So I think gray is a, or silver is a really, really great color for that. And like silver just goes with every card. That's the thing. This particular silver goes with every single card. Isn't that amazing? I wonder if they did that on purpose. Like that, that really works well. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that, that gray with that looks, look how that makes it pop. Look at that. So I, now that I think of it, I can see they perfectly chose the backs. Do I know this for a fact? No. But I think the backs were chosen because they go with the images really well. They complement them very, very nice. So that's something to think about. Wow. Okay. So let's get to the book. I need a sip of water. Okay, I'm going to zoom out as much as possible. Ouch. I hit my elbow. Now it hurts. I'm so blind. I need my glasses for a book this big in front of me. Okay, so this is a huge book. <clears throat> this came out in 2020. And there have been a couple of books that have come out. This book is not cheap uh, by far. And I wanted to buy this book a long time ago, but I didn't because I didn't have the deck. But I wanted it for what's inside. And I'll show you what that is. But as soon as I got the, I ordered this deck, I got this book. Um, now I got it at a very reasonable price of about a hundred bucks, which is a lot, right? I love that it has the star up front. It's a real nice. So this feels like paper, like, like hardcover uh, book. And this is a glossy. It's real like, and it's thick. So like there's an edging in it. And I love that it's blown out so you could really see the image a lot better. Let me see. Where are the cards? Let me see if I can find the other one. So look how much bigger it is. Look how amazing that is. So I, and it's beautiful. So 
inside nice and gray uh, gray gold and gray with a whole bunch of other colors and then in this book you will get to see a lot of her other artwork which i really like <clears throat> and what i find interesting is the artwork that she produces isn't really my style but when it comes to the tarot i'm really really drawn to it which i find it to be very interesting and it's from also from a uh, folger press came out in 2020 like i said there's Lorena's Inner Compass, then her Major Arcana, and then other parts of um, the history of how probably uh, the cards came up. This is her when she was older in 1960. Look at how beautiful she still is. An amazing, amazing woman. So her, uh, Gabrielle talks about uh, Lorena and some experiences that she had with her and her perspective on the tarot and it's a pretty good amount of information for an intro and notes in the biography and then this oh my god this is the reason i was gonna buy this book eventually if i never got the cards because the images are blown up and i want to show you the size difference of this image Look at that. Look at the size difference. And actually, if I just go by the picture to picture, that's the size difference. And now cut cut, cut out the border and, and look how big this. So you get a really in-depth look. And my idea was to cut these out and find a way to frame them, laminate them. And I don't think I'd like the lamination. But somehow manipulate these where I could have used them as a tarot deck. But now that I have these, I don't have to do that. So I could actually <clears throat> take these out and make a, call, uh, a wall full of the tarot as artwork. But you get to see all the little lines like you normally wouldn't. So let me zoom in so you could see a little better. But look at that. Isn't that amazing? And you can actually see, because there's the shadow of when they took the picture from above. So it feels like you could see feel the thickness of the image on this painting. It's 16 by 14 centimeters. I have no idea what that is. Uh, and they are all the same size. So now I need to know what 16 by 14 centimeters is. So I will put it on the screen. But it gives you a different appreciation for the image because you could see it so much more clearly. All the little things. I didn't even mind. I didn't even notice the heart when I first saw that. I just find her face really unsettling. Love it. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, and I have a better image of... I think it's a dragon. I really do. Just doesn't have the wings. Still think this is beautiful. Love it. Okay. So, then, as it, it goes into, goes into, as in a mirror with multiple facets, Lorena Carrington and the tarot. So, it really just talks about her, the history of the tarot, how it came about, how her previous <clears throat> artwork was influenced by the tarot as well. She even has uh, paintings uh p her and people that she would study the tarot with and have these gatherings a tarot reader uh doing a reading for someone which i think is pretty interesting the idea of strength here in this image called sister of the moon the hangman the idea of the hangman here so <clears throat> uh maybe the hermit if i read correctly if i remember correctly so it shows up in her work, 
So it discusses her work and how the tarot influences her artwork, which I think is wonderful to see and learn more about her. The moon influenced by, but this one's called Two Dogs in the How Two Dogs Howling at the Moon. So you get a better understanding of her perspective of the tarot. Now, will that help me with the reading when I pull and use her cards? Oh, this is stunning. Um, probably not, but what, oh, the chariot maybe. What really it does is it gives me a real appreciation for the work that she put into the tarot to get the images that she created. And knowing that she put that much effort in just makes me feel more connected to her. Um, I love this deck. I think this deck is absolutely beautiful. I've already used it. And let me flip the camera over and we can talk a little bit more about this. And I'll be right back. And I am back. I've had this deck, I'd say for, God, maybe five, six months. I used it for a couple of weeks uh, with an Oracle deck. What Oracle deck I used is with, I don't remember right off the bat. Um, but what I did was I kind of flipped my normal practice. Usually what I do in the mornings is I pull an Oracle card as an overarching theme, and then I pull two tarot cards, one on each side. With this particular deck, I did the exact same thing, except what I did is I used the tarot card as the overarching theme that I needed to focus on today and used two oracle cards to guide me through that. And I found that to be a really beautiful practice for me. And it really made me focus on the things that were really important throughout that day in a way where if I pulled the tarot, I mean, the oracle card didn't do that because these are about major life changes or shifts or things that need to be focused. They're so important. It really made me very, very mindful of how I went through the day with the reading in mind. And what I did was um, I post them on Instagram, but I actually... For that, when I was using this deck, I ended up taking the screen, uh, the picture and made it my screensaver so that I, every time I opened my phone, I would see the image that would remind me of what I needed to be mindful of for that day. It is not a deck that I regret. I'm so happy that they printed this again. I didn't, I, it was, it was huge news when they were reprinting it because I don't think there was ever an announcement that it was going to be printed or was being considered. All of a sudden, boom, pre-orders, take them. I was like, wow. And so I'm seriously considering getting a backup, but I'm, I'm trying to be mindful about backups. <laughs> um, this one will always be in my collection. I have very few major Arcana decks only. I think this is my number one. And until next time, my name is Benny, and I'm the Fool's Apprentice. Bye, guys.